everybody. This is Margie Meacham. This is another edition of the Learning to Build podcast. And today my guest is Eve Alexander. She's a content development coordinator at Frontline Education. Welcome, Eve. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about your work in particular and uh, what Frontline Education does? Well, Frontline Education provides human capital management for education. In other words, they provide a multitude of software solutions in one unified platform that are used by school districts across the country. What I do is just a small part of the big picture. I create e-learning courses that we offer to the uh, customers who, who contract with us for the software solutions. And Eve, can you give me an example of uh, one of those courses that you've worked on? Well, we do several different types. We do compliance, which a lot of instructional designers work on. There's the mm -hmm. usual sexual harassment um, because a lot of schools have cafeterias and uh, dining. They have uh, compliance courses about kitchen safety and sanitation. We do compliance courses on, like I recently did one on Lyme disease to educate uh, teachers and school staff about Lyme disease. Then we also do professional development that would be for teachers to improve their skills. Uh, we also okay, great. do substitute teacher training. Oh, okay, now that's interesting. So substitute teachers obviously have to kind of turn on a dime and hit the ground running. Is that the kind of thing uh, that uh, this training would help them with? Exactly. A lot of substitute teachers are very highly educated in their field, but they never went to college to learn how to be a teacher. So this fills in that gap and gets them prepared to go into a school and start teaching. Fabulous. Um, you and I got to know each other because we've been communicating about the science of learning, and I know you're very interested in it, and actually you are making a major presentation at Learning Solutions, a big conference that's sponsored by uh, an organization I work closely with, which is the eLearning Guild. So I'd like to um, have you tell us a little bit more about what you're going to be presenting there. Well, actually, I was invited to co-present with Alexander Salas. So the two of us are presenting together. We both use characters in our e-learning. I use uh, a program called Articulate Presenter Studio, and Alexander uses Articulate Storyline 2. So they're both by the same software company, but they're slightly different programs. So we're each going to present on how we use characters in our respective programs. And when you say characters, do you mean photographic images of human beings or cartoons or both? Well, actually, I use all kinds. Those software programs already come preloaded with illustrated and photographic characters in different mm -hmm. poses. I also use stock images from uh, photo search. I also use a program called Pixton, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Pixton allows me to create my own characters. They're kind of cartoony, comic looking, but you can actually get pretty realistic with them. And every character I make is completely unique, unlike when I get stock imagery or use the, the imagery that comes in the program. I can create my own unique characters, which is wonderful for adding diversity to our training courses. I've also used yeah. uh, video clips of actors. Right. And um, all of those techniques as an instructional designer, um, those are very powerful because we know from the research that the brain responds to other human beings. We're programmed to pay more attention if there's a human being in the scene. So um, having someone illustrate or demonstrate or watching maybe a little story 
take place. All of those things are great ways to help get the learning to cross. So I'm sure that your audience is going to be real interested in that. As a matter of fact, um, I believe, and I don't want to sound too um, conceited, but I, I believe you're referring uh, to some of my writing in your presentation. Do I have that right? That's right, Margie. I actually attended your session last year at EllisCon, and you'll never know how much you influenced me. I ended up buying your book, Brain Matters, and I now incorporate stories into my e-learning to help the learner actually, what's the term? Uh, well, as you say in your book, uh, hearing it in a story makes it a lot more memorable, but then mm -hmm. seeing Absolutely. it, seeing the imagery makes it even more powerful a learning experience. Absolutely. Yeah, so you've got it. I can tell you you're listening. Yes, very true. <laughs> I took a and, lot of notes. You know what? <laughs> you, you must have been listening because that's the other thing I tell people is please take notes. It's the only way you'll remember anything. So um, when we take notes, it actually creates additional neural pathways in our brain to help us really own the content versus just listening and understanding in the moment. But the reason I brought that up, Eve, is not like to toot my own horn, but to show that this is how learning happens and this is how the learning profession advances is one professional picks up on what another person did. And, of course, I learned things, uh, many of which are, are cited in my book, uh, Brain Matters. I hope anyone learned anything using neuroscience. And now you're carrying it on, and I just think that's so cool because there are going to be people in your audience who are going to have that same experience. They're going to be taking notes, and they're going to be going back and saying, I want to implement the things that Eve is teaching me about the power of stories and the power of characters. Uh, so um, I wish you a lot of luck, and I'm really excited for you um, and real, real thrilled. If I touched one person like that, that makes that whole trip last year and all the effort that went into it worthwhile. So what is someone going to take away from your presentation uh, when, they, uh, when they come to see it? And it's, uh, tell me again the date that you're presenting. That's Thursday, March 23rd at 1 o'clock. And the conference, uh, where is it this year? This is in Orlando, Florida. Yeah, okay. And the so, but, people here. <laughs> yeah, how bad. Are you actually from Florida then? I'm not from Florida, but I do live here in Florida right now. Oh, okay, great. Easy commute for you on uh, conference day. So, back to my question <laughs> what, what, <laughs> somebody <laughs> what, what will somebody get? Uh, walk away from after your session? Well, first of all, if they don't use Articulate and they're not sure if they want Storyline or Presenter, they're going to see both programs and, and that will help them evaluate which one would work better for them. If they already do use Articulate, Alex and I are going to show them how we use characters to enhance our online training. I think that's great. It sounds like a very practical, um, you know, it's not going to be up in the clouds theory. People are going to come away with more information about two very popular tools, and they're going to come away with how to use those tools to apply brain science to enhance their learning. So I highly recommend this session, folks, and um, uh, please uh, give Eve your support. Um, Eve, I want to thank you for coming here today to talk about that. I've got a couple follow-up questions for you. What are you working on right now that's got you most excited? Well, what I'm working on now is going back to some of our courses that we did two years ago and adding stories. I have a subject matter expert who I have been working with, and now she can write scenarios to go into these courses because she's a teacher, she's the, the SME, and she she understands what we're doing now. So she'll write the 
scenarios, and then I will put them into these courses. These are going to be classroom management courses for teachers. Well, that sounds really exciting, and I love the way you have developed the skill in your subject matter expert. Um, and I'm sure it helps that she's a teacher because she's already very open to learning science and how to apply it. Uh, but that's great advice for every instructional designer. You don't have to carry the load yourself. Have your SMEs understand what you're trying to do, and they're more than happy to help you flesh out scenarios. And that's just one example of how they can help out. So how does someone get in touch with you, Eve? Well, email is probably the easiest way. Okay, and we'll have you. Yeah, let's get, if you don't mind sharing it, I'll also put it on our site. All right. It's E. Alexander at FrontlineEd.com. And we'll have um, uh, Frontline Ed's website uh, listed on our site as well. And listen up, everybody, because there's also a very special offer for one of those tools that Eve mentioned. And she played a hand in procuring for us a really nice deal um, so that you can actually play around with some of the concepts we've talked about today. It will be listed on our site, and we can thank you, Eve, for um, championing that for us. So thank you very much for that. It's a, it's a very good offer, and I hope some of your listeners will be able to take advantage of it. Super. Okay, everybody, we've been listening to Eve Alexander. She's a content development coordinator at Frontline Education. She's going to be speaking at uh, the upcoming Learning Solutions uh, Conference in Orlando, and we wish her all the best. Um, and it's uh, an example of how learning passes from one learning professional to another. So tune in next time when we'll have another learning professional to join our community. Thanks, Eve. Mm -hmm.